Now, now you saw the fucking disclaimer, right? Don't be that guy. Do not be that guy and bitch in my comment section. Don't do it. I'm gonna fucking embarrass you. I'm telling you right now. That's just a forewarning. Don't say I didn't warn you. It's your boy Ars back at again with another video. I'm not wasting any time bullshitting around with this fucking episode. I'm not gonna be nice. Fuck all the pleasantries. We're jumping right into this shit. If you're new to my channel, that's the rating system. Look at it, and then move on. For everybody else, follow me on a journey of complete and utter bullshit. Okay? So, as per usual, we still got the pre-cap shit. Still blatantly trying to waste time in the episode. Already, at the start. Not surprising, though. Um, key point. Key point right here, okay? Remember last episode, I gave Tapo shit for using all those damn Hakai's, okay? You guys remember that shit for the people that watched my last episode. Now, then explain to me why this nigga is still firing Hakai's. I'm sorry, Hakai's. Can anyone explain this? Can anyone explain this shit? Really, can anyone explain this? The Hakai's sole purpose is to either destroy or kill an enemy. It doesn't exist for any other reason. He just said that he can't destroy you or he's gonna get disqualified. And he's still firing fucking Hakai's. Explanation. Anyone in the ether. Where's the logic? Oh wait, I'm sorry. This is Dragon Ball Super. There is no logic. Let's move forward. I'm sorry. I was stupid for trying to apply logic to this show, even though it's built around established logic. Uh, sorry. 17 is wondering, Ooh, okay, what do I do now that this guy just nullified my key blast with a Hakai blast like anyone would have expected at this point? And, um, Tapo says, I'm not gonna give you a time to respond, and he puts a Hakai through the wall and just basically walks through the, or just walks past all the rubble. Now, the thing that confuses me is this guy is surrounded with God of Destruction Aura, right? So why the hell does he need Hakai's to destroy rocks? Surely he can focus this destruction aura into his fist and easily just obliterate rocks. We saw our last um, episode that rocks were just floating into him and getting obliterated. So why can't he do the same thing by actually trying? That that just me? Okay, whatever. Um following here he's looking 17 is looking at the rubble he gets an idea oh, okay i have an idea now and proceeds to run away right so topo chases him obviously and does his hakai thing again and another piece of rubble 17 while the rubble is over his head blasts the rubble and it falls down on him as beerus decides that he wants to point out because you know needless exposition so, such a fantastic and needed part of my experience of this fucking episode. Amazing. Subarashi. And of course, stupidest strategy I could ever I could have ever seen from 17. 17 is so intelligent. And you think that a guy who's surrounded with God of Destruction Aura and can Hakai at will is going to get defeated or slowed down by some rubble. Really, 17? Really? Okay. <laughs> okay. Sure. Topo comes out of the rubble, obviously, and starts firing set, um, firing a bunch of key blasts at 17. He just said, fuck it. Yeah, I'm not dealing with your shit anymore, right? And 17's on his knees. Now, the logical thing for Topo to do would be to just grab 17 by his head where he can't move, take him to the edge of the ring, and throw him off. That's not what Topo does. Of course that's not what Topo does, because we need 17 to stay in the ring, right? So he fires up a giant ass key blast and is about to throw it at 17 at point blank range. Why? No idea. Not even necessary. There's no point. All you do Grab him, because he already can't run, and throw him off the side. But no, Topo says, 
Fuck it. The, the first time that I fired a key blast or a Hakai didn't work. So let's do it a second time at point blank range. Oh, oh, guess what? Doesn't work. Why? Because lo and behold, Frieza comes back. What? What the fuck? Can, can anyone explain to me how this nigga recovered from all that shit that he just took in less than a minute? One, no, no, not even a minute has passed. Not even a minute. About 30 seconds at this point has passed, approximately. This nigga just fought Goku before he came into this tournament. Before he even came into this shit. And they, just by throwing hands, injured each other to the point that they needed fucking sensu beans to recover. This nigga took a Hakai to the face, got gut busted, got dropped head first at a high velocity from a large drop, and then got his head squeezed like a goddamn grape, and recovers in less than 30 fucking seconds. Are you serious? Are we actually taking the piss? Not not let, let not let him recover after a minute, not two minutes, not three minutes, not even not even four minutes. Just less than 30 seconds, Frieza miraculously recovers. Okay. Sure. Brilliant logic. Anybody else taking that fucking damage, they would have been out the ring indefinitely until the end of the tournament. Would at least need it like 10 minutes to recover from that shit. Not Frieza. Frieza has got to recovery now, guys. Just miraculously. Goku, Goku, he has infinite stamina. Vegeta, he has infinite energy. And and uh, Frieza, Frieza, that man just has amazing recovery now. All these amazing ass pulls in one episode, in one arc. Oh my fucking god, I can't be ass with this shit. Okay. And then he decides, I'm gonna use paralysis and telekinesis. So now the writers remember that he can do that shit. Didn't use any of this shit earlier. Now, against the God of Destruction level fighter, now he decides that he wants to pull out his useful tricks. Why didn't he use his paralysis when he was fighting not Birder? You know, the guy that was moving really fast, who was outpacing him? Why didn't he paralyze him? What have stopped him from moving completely? So he uses it against Toppo, but the guy who's really fucking fast and you need to slow down, don't bother to try to par um, paralyze him. When you had the speed advantage. This this can't be real. This cannot be real right now. Holy fucking shit. Wow. So, of course, none of that works. Because, again, God Destruction Level Fighter. Fucking duh. Topo says... Yeah, I'm not having your shit. And he'll grab Frieza by the neck and throw him. Couldn't do that to 17. 17, in your face, didn't bother to just grab him and throw him off the edge. But you'll grab Frieza and fucking throw him. Okay. Pristine. Pristine logic. Of course. Of course! And conveniently throws Frieza in the same direction that 17, uh... Flew off in. <laughs> How fucking convenient! Topo is now standing here. Is like, okay, yeah, you can't win, right? I'm about to, I'm about to finish you off. No more games, no more games. And then Jiren, Goku, and Vegeta come out of nowhere. And then Jiren fires a key blast intended for Goku and Vegeta. They dodge it, and then it hits Frieza and Seventeen. We don't know what the fuck happens to them at this point, right? Now. Jiren and, and Tapo do this mutual nodding thing, 
And now Tapo is going to be fighting Vegeta here. So he starts laying into him with a bunch of key glass, right? And Vegeta does the thing that he always does when he's up against a strong fighter. He fires a final flash. And of course, against Tapo, who has the power of a god of destruction, it does nothing. Not surprising. Not surprising at all. And this... <laughs> This shit, no, 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 no. Do, do you understand when I keep saying about this character aggression bullshit? This is what I'm talking about. Every time that I talk about character aggression, shit like this is the shit that I'm talking about. This is the second time where Vegeta has thought about a Saiyan from another universe who he hasn't spent more than a day with, okay? Hasn't spent more than a day with the dude. And he's singing about them more than his goddamn family. His wife, his son, and his newborn child. Will not think of them first. Will think of his fucking pseudo-student first. How does that make sense? How does that logically make sense? If you... If your life... If your life was on the line, and your life was flashing for your eyes, or whatever you were fighting for, you're fighting for your universe, whatever, right? Would you really be thinking about that random dude that you've only met twice now, or your family? Which is more important, Vegeta? Which is more important to you, the viewer? Topo then starts beating his man's ass, okay? Not really surprising. They have a little bit of skirmish. And then, of course, as per usual, Vegeta gets blasted again and gets pushed up against the wall to show that he's pushed up against the wall. Up against the wall against a strong enemy. Nice, uh, nice imagery you got there going, writers. Truly pristine. I get it! And, of course, Topo decides, alright, no more games. No more games. I know I use the Hakai multiple times against 17 for no reason, uh, but I'm not going to use the Hakai to finish you off here. Now I'm just going to switch to using a normal Key Blast. Against 17, let's fire a million Hakais. Against Vegeta, nope, just fire regular Energy Blast. Sure, sure. So you can only use it to cancel. Out, uh, sorry, cancel out his final flash. Can't be bothered to use it to finish him off. Nope, of course not. Because then, because then that wouldn't allow for what happens next, right? Where finally Vegeta thinks about his family before Kappa. Finally, right? And he gets his badass moment. Finally, Vegeta gets his time to shine. I'm not like you. I cast aside nothing. And that fucking key blast that Topo fired at him, just blown away by the Prince of Ass Pool and his amazing power up that I called literally a couple days ago. What I said was gonna happen. I said in the video where I was collabing with NBA, I said that Vegeta most likely is going to get angry and get another one of those bullshit power-ups where he's going to be temporarily stronger than the person he's fighting against. What fucking happens? Exactly what I predicted. Wow, writers. Even I predicted what you were going to do. That just shows how fucking original you are, right? How creative? Yeah, this is the best of your ability? Yep, of course it is. Vegeta proceeds to start kicking Topo's ass. Not surprising. Still being his ass. Not surprising. Now this man starts using Hakai's again. After he starts getting his ass beat, now you want to start using Hakai's. Could have been using Hakai's when you were firing against him the whole time, but nope. Nope. Now this guy can use Hakai's. Oh, did I mention that he doesn't need to charge them anymore? What was that before, Beerus? Um, he needs time to charge those Hakai's. Now he's just firing them rapid fire at Vegeta. Of course! Of course. Of course! 
And Vegeta, with his amazing ass pull power, focuses his ass pull power into his hand, and the prince destroys a Hakai with a single fucking punch. So now, Vegeta is temporarily beyond God Destruction. Awesome. Awesome. Can't, can't wait for Goku to do it too. I, I can't wait. I just can't wait. Vegeta proceeds to say, yeah, yeah, okay, I, I'm gonna go all out and, um, rip off another fucking scene from Z. This time, the writers don't even hide it. They showed Z in the episode for a whole minute. They don't even care anymore. They're outright admitting that they're lazy. <laughs> <laughs> this is a joke. This has to be a joke. <laughs> this this has to be the shittiest joke I've ever seen. <laughs> 10 plus ripoffs from Z. 10 plus in one fucking arc. Holy shit. And the thing is, it doesn't even make sense for him to use the same technique he used against Boo. He was beating Tombo's ass. He had the upper hand. What was the point of using that explosion of energy for if you were just punching away Hakai's and completely dismantling him earlier? What's the point? <laughs> Oh my god, I, <laughs> I just, I just can't, I can't be asked. So Tapo says, I'm gonna draw all the power I have, and makes a giant ass Akai, and fires at Vegeta, who's doing his rip-off final explosion, right? Powers up even more, destroys the Hakai, and Tapo loses. Brilliant. And you would, you would think that Vegeta would be gone. You, you think that after that he'll be gone. That will be the end of Vegeta. He's dead now. Of course he's not. Of course! And, and how do they explain how he didn't completely destroy his body this time? How? When he used, quote, all of his energy? He's gotten unbelievably stronger. So that explains why his body can take the attack now. Oh! Oh my god! No! Please, this can't... It, it, this can't be... It, it can't be this stupid. It, it really can't. This show can't be this stupid. With these shitty, half-assed explanations. It truly cannot. This can't be real. So before, when he used all of his energy to cause his body to explode, dead. Body gone. Now this time, because he's stronger and he uses the same technique, which is using all of your energy to blow yourself up, now he can just magically evade the blow up power. The blow up part negated. Okay, sure, whatever. Now, I want you to pay close attention to this. Vegeta has used all of his power. All of it. Okay? Okay. Jiren talks shit to Tapo, says I expected more of you. So now Jiren is just a massive asshole. Out of nowhere. I, I guess. And um, now he says... Now feast your eyes on this, it goes into his full power. Fuck you! I ain't having that shit! No. No, no, no. You, you're, you're taking the fucking piss. You're taking the fucking piss. You wait until it's a four on one with four minutes left in the tournament to use your full power. Really? You could have used this at any other time. You could have used it 
to save Tom before being knocked out. And you would have a God of Destruction level fighter helping you. And you put yourself at a massive disadvantage for what? What's the point? Where's the rationale behind that? Fuck this episode. Oh my god. I haven't been this mad since fucking 115 came out. Holy shit. Going into the preview, the guy who has no energy is using Super Saiyan Blue. And the guy who has supposed to have no stamina left is using Super Saiyan Blue. Of course! I is this a bad dream? Am, am I imagining this? How... How retarded do the writers think that the people who are watching this are? Or are people this fucking stupid that they just, they just say this is okay? Are, are people really that stupid? Actually, though, I, I just <laughs> I, I, this this can't be real. It, this has to be this has to be a bad dream, man. So next time on Dragon Ball Super, Jared finally used his full power. Could have used it before before they got a chance to get all these ass pull power ups, but no. He waits now until he's all by himself. 4 on 1. And there's only 4 minutes left. Yup. Yup, that sounds like super logic to me. Yup. Fuck you. All my points that you see where I took off. All that. Those are what I thought was good about the episode. Fuck off. Dumpster fire of an episode. Absolutely one of the worst episodes of this arc. No questions asked. No sense was made through the entirety of this episode. Nothing. Just more ass pulls, more nonsensical writing out of my face. I, I, I can't be asked this fucking series. Listen, listen, listen. If you're new to my channel, right, and you like this shit, if you're tired if you're tired of these other reviewers out here blowing smoke up your ass with this sensationalist bullshit, join the dark side. Like and subscribe to the like the video and subscribe to this channel. I'm I'm not I'm I'm done. I'm gonna go watch something else. Marsh comes in like a lion, Nanasu no Taiga, something, anything other than this shit. spectacularly garbage your boy ours is out holy shit